Greetings, everybody. This is Etho, and we are, of course, playing some more Project Ozone 2 here today, guys. Uh, how you doing? Things are good. I've just been uh, doing some little busy, busy body work around the place here, uh, getting ready for our episode. So I, I made some yellowite seeds, went to Jupiter, mined some palladium, made a second fully upgraded mining machine to speed things up, because... I was getting tired of waiting around, to be honest. <laughs> and two is better than one, right? So I got two of those things, and just been, like, crafting stuff, like, non-stop, using up all our machines, basically. Trying to keep everything working. And we are ready to go here, guys. So, I've been informed. I got it wrong. And, you know, I knew it was wrong, but I still got it wrong again. You guys told me several times throughout this series, I don't need the transmutation table for EMC to get started with it. We need the energy condenser, which is significantly easier to craft, like way, way easier. And I think you can copy items with this, if I understand. Transmutation, I think maybe you can create them out of thin air. I'm not sure entirely, though, of course, it's a mod I've never never used before. So we're going to figure it out as we go. Uh, today, what I would like to do since we're still having power issues, maybe we could try to build a bigger reactor. And I've been thinking about maybe finally automating our tinker setup here. We need to mass be able to mass produce blocks and also plates. Because a lot of recipes seem to require plates. Um, so that should be fun to set up. I've, I've never hooked one of these up to an ME system before. But just a little quick thing to get us going here that I wanted to try as well. Uh, some recipes require the unstable ingots, and I want to see if we can, instead of manually crafting these things all the time, if we can do it in the ME system. Okay, long story short, I had some trouble here, but I think I got it figured out now. <laughs> I think maybe I had the, the diamond and the iron mixed up or something. Okay, so we're going to make a pattern for it. We'll throw our sigil in there. That was very difficult to get. Remember, we had to do that uh, ritual in the end, and it took forever. Now, let's see if we can craft these babies. Mobius, we had some in there. Can we craft 100? Look at that. Looks good. Cool. So these are used in a lot of recipes, too. We'll have a way of automating that now. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, so I got some palladium today. We are going to try to make a big reactor, a big, big reactor. Like, how big? I don't know. Let's go for 100. Okay, so that's going to require uranium rods, palladium, all that stuff we should have. And since I also got our yellowite seeds being made, you can see this is going up this number here. Or it should. 10,070, 10,074. So we can mass produce, like, free power. Got them planted in our farm. And, yeah, I think we're good to go here. So we need casings. Oh, I guess we'll need more of those. Okay, what else do we need? Let's look at the big reactor thing. I guess we'll grab all this. I got some glass made. I think I made everything except maybe the controller. Oh, check this out. I just discovered something pretty important here. I've been having a lot of trouble crafting, auto-crafting anything involving steel. And I just realized it's because there is actually two different types of steels. Like, usually I think Ore Dictionary handles that if there's an overlap. But for some reason in this pack, with steel, it doesn't. So, possibly because I'm still using 2.2.2 of the, the pack and I haven't updated it like I should. <laughs> but I, I really like the Hardcore Questing mode mod. I don't want to use the new one. Anyways, I got all our stuff in the chest here, and I picked out a spot, tried to shut off all our unnecessary machines here, so the sifting is going to shut down for a bit, and that way we'll reduce our power usage. Hopefully that'll stay above the negatives for the most part. Why is it stuck on negative? I don't know. Okay, well, we'll have to work quickly here, because if we run out of power, we're in, we're in big doo-doo. <laughs> uh... I decided let's put the the uh, reactor over here. We're going to tear down our diesel generator because I don't think we need it long term for anything. And actually, let's get the magnet on so we don't lose anything because 
if we do have to set it up, I don't want to remake anything. Um, yeah, I think we can get rid of all this stuff, though, to be honest. It's more like early mid-game power, which we've kind of moved beyond now. We need something better, and it's taken up a lot of space, causing lag and all that kind of stuff, too. So we'll get one big giant reactor, and the rest of our power will probably come from solar panels until we move on to, like, draconic devolution stuff, I'm guessing. All right, so we're going to build a, a little room down here. We removed the diesel generator stuff. We expanded the platform a little bit. And now we got to decide how big to make the reactor. Right now, uh, where I got the blocks laid out, this is 11 by 7. I think we'll go maybe 11 by 9. I have no idea how much power that will actually produce. But hopefully it's good enough for quite a while. All right, so we just got to fill in all the... Oh, that's not good. <laughs> you don't want that to happen when you're building something. Why did that happen? So I got this centered on the dirt block. Let's see here. Right where I broke that block. Yeah, so that matches up with this. That's the center. That's good. Four block spacing here. Four block. Oh, maybe I went one too far here, I guess. Hmm, that usually doesn't happen. All right, so let's fill this in. And then, how high do we go? One, two, three, four, five at the very minimum, I would say. Yeah, I think we'll go with this. This is 11 by 9 by 7 tall. I think that's pretty good. We can make it bigger if we need to, but I don't think it's going to matter too, too much. Uh, the big reason we need the reactor, of course, is power, but also to produce plutonium, this this blue stuff here, uh, as a waste product. So otherwise we could just use solar panels, but we do actually need the reactor. So we'll fill in the sides here with reactor glass. Excuse me, taxes. Good stuff, okay. And then we gotta fill in all our control rods and stuff too. And uh, to be honest, I don't know the optimum high efficiency, high performance way of arranging the fuel rods, but I think checker pattern is pretty good, right? So that's what we're going to go with here. And go all the way to the top. It's going to hold a lot of fuel, actually. <laughs> I think maybe we are not producing enough to keep it going, actually. But we can increase that, too. So above each of these, we need the fuel rod controllers. And then in between... Uh, th these fuel chambers, this is where the yellow right goes, uh, we have to cool it with some sort of coolant. I think we're going to go with Enderium. Let's see here. Let's grab our power tap, access ports, controllers. There are two types of uh, reactors you can make. You can make a turbine one as well, which is better, I believe. But we don't have the stuff to do that. Yeah, we'll put the controller there, and then maybe maybe we'll just keep everything on one side. But I might change my mind on that. Let's do... Let's put our ports here and here. We'll oh, just destroy everything, why don't I? <laughs> there and there, and then the power tap we'll put in the middle, maybe? That way everything's kind of together, and I don't have to run cables all over the place. Okay, let's try something here. We got to uh, fill up our reactor now with the liquid resonant ender stuff, right? Uh, I'm trying to learn how to use the Fluivac system. Tanks. Let's go to tanks. I think we can probably just use this, hopefully. Um, I'm, I really don't understand this thing. So change modes with C. Blue is input, orange is output, right? I thought like we would be able to throw this in here. And it would fill up of the ender pearl stuff, but uh, no. <laughs> so I'm trying to like... Okay, now it works. You have to have a tank on you, I guess. It doesn't work with buckets. Right? We have empty buckets on us. And now it doesn't work. So you have to have some inventory for the fluid to go into. It doesn't have like an internal fluid inventory. Interesting. Now, if I right click on this, does it pull it out of the machine? Doesn't seem to. Which means this thing's not super useful. <laughs> oh, I guess, uh, yeah, duh. I can put that in, right? 
Oh, and now it went back into here. Okay, so you fill up the tank. That's easy to do. And now if we go downstairs here to our thing, go to output mode. I think I get it now. I think I get it. I know how to make it useful. We can start just like right clicking and it'll take it right out of that tank and put it into the world here. That's cool. Okay, that simplifies it actually. All right, this is the last one, guys. Got it all done. I kind of feel like a honeybee right now. Like I stashed my honey and now I got to cap the combs or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, it's all done. Oh, looks like it completed. That's a good sign. And now we can start testing it out. So it's going to take so much fuel, like probably at least three stacks, I would I would think. I didn't exactly count how many fuel rods I put in. So let's see what it does here. One stack in. You see the yellow bars are filling up now. Does it go throughout the whole thing? It looks like it. It looks like it evenly distributes it. It doesn't like just like fully fill up one. Okay, that's interesting. All right, let's put in some more. Two stacks, three stacks, four stacks, five stacks. Whoa, it holds a lot. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, so it's just about ten stacks of Eulorium to fill it up. All right, place your guesses, guys. How much power is it going to produce? I'm going to say, ooh, let's go for a solid 500 kerfs. That's my guess. Okay, how do we turn it on? Do not auto eject. Uh, activate. Here we go. 400. 450. 460. Oh man, I was actually pretty close. 470. I think that's about it. 478 at the most. Cool. Okay, that's pretty good. I was, I'm happy with that. That's a lot of power. Uh, in fact, my cables can't transfer that much power. So what do I do about that? Do I have to send it to a Tesseract or something? I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. Uh, one other thing we're going to do here. I got a redstone furnace and pulverizer. Instead of like constantly using our system to produce the yellowites, like we got to pulverize the ore and then furnace it. We are just going to directly do it here. So that'll output into here our finished fuel, and then we will maybe put a pulverizer here that will output down, and probably get input from the side or something. Okay, input on this one from the top. So we put the ore into here, and then it'll go right into the reactor. All right, and then these will need power as well. And then the spent fuel, the finished stuff here, We'll put into the Emmys. Oh no, let, you know what we're going to do with that? We're going to automatically convert it into the plutonium if we can. So let's put that here and see if it'll go inside. Input. All right, some time has passed here. So when you see the reactor and it's it's used a lot of the fuel already, don't get alarmed. <laughs> uh, it's about 10 or 20 minutes since we filled it up. I was adding a recipe to make test racks, which we have now. That took a long time. There's like so many steps to it. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, so we have to add all these frames here, as well as a, a way of making redstone capsules, these these things here, and charging those up, and then also had to add some recipes here for filling up the things, and yeah, took a little bit of time here. But now we can make test racks whenever we want. So we have one set up over here next to our power, which is on the mining frequency, I'm hoping, and on send receive, right? Yeah, for energy, that's good. So I'm hoping we can just put a Tesseract here, because I know these cables can't keep up. They only do 180,000 RF per tick, and we're doing 500,000 pretty much with this reactor, which is a lot, right? So I think hopefully we can just put that there and have it uh, send receive power on the mining dimension. Now, hopefully that'll start filling up our, our cells here. Oh, if it can, that is. So that'll drain some power, and then let's see if it charges back up. That's charging kind of slow, isn't it? 
I think it's working. <laughs> um, I'm having a hard time telling, though. Hmm. Oh, you know what? We can do it like this. Let's just put this next to it. Okay, now there's a deficit. And yeah, you see it's going up to like 500,000 because we got solar panels and stuff too charging in addition to the reactor. So that seems to be working. That's good. And I think this will still get power from the test rack. So these will receive power as well as this machine, which needs it. Uh, this also is going to need water. So I brought some water buckets and a reservoir. We will put that underneath maybe. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, we'll go underneath here. Whoa. Do, do, do. Maybe just right here is good. Oh, got to learn how to fly still. <laughs> uh, fill this up with two buckets so it's infinite. And now we need a fluid cable that will extract. And go down, turn that to insert. And we're just about done with setting this up. I guess we haven't hooked up to the ME system yet. That's kind of important, too. Um, oh, uh, it's got to get input for this tank here. What is that? Blue. There we go. So now this is going to start making the plutonium, which we need. And we need to give this the ore. What's a good way of doing that? I think we're going to just put like an interface here. We will have a thing for bringing ore here, and then we will put that right into this pulverizer. So this will go to insert, this will go to extract. Okay, so if there's ore here, it'll go into here. Then that gets turned into the ingots and put right into the reactor, so that'll refill it constantly. Uh, this plutonium we will take out of here into the ME system as well. Green, that's what we want. Extract and insert. Okay, so now we just got to hook an ME cable up to this interface and it should all be uh, good to go. We had a little bit of a problem here. Some of the plutonium from the interface was going into the pulverizer and then jamming this up. So added a filter here so only yellow right ore will go in from this interface. So that should solve that problem. And one other thing, maybe you guys can help me out with this because I really don't understand it. So I ran a cable along the top here to try to get it out of the way because we'll probably have some sort of roof in this room eventually. Uh, and I was just going to attach it to this cable here. You see it's 7 out of 8 channels, so there's room for one more. This is 27 out of 32, and it goes up to our, our main interface thing. So it should be able to connect to this, right? And it seems to, you see, we got that blue line there for a moment. But then it vanishes. And it doesn't actually connect. Why? A lot of my devices, well not a lot, but some of them are failing now. When they used to work, like this one here, I can't, uh, I can't use this anymore. And I've tried fixing the cables several times and they just don't seem to, to work, even, even though there's channels free. So what am, what am I missing with that? I don't get it. Let me know in the comments if you know. Uh, I'm going to have to connect somewhere else then. Cool. All right. So I found a cable here that works, which means this is now sending the yellow right ore here. And this seems to be good to go. I had to make one more change to it. It was creating more cyanite than this reprocessor could handle. So we added in two now. We have two, and they seem to be able to keep up, which is good. And look at our main controls here. It, it stays topped off at 100% fuel with no waste in it. I don't know if that's a good idea. Maybe, like, I think there's a certain balance you need to have. And it might be good to have waste in there. I'm not sure how that all works. But anyways, as it is right now, we're getting a solid 478 curfs or so, which is great. That's plenty of power for what we need right now. And what else? Oh, yeah, so... We have three yellow right plants at the farm. If we look at the ore here, 5,532. So we're using some. You see it just went down by one. But we're gaining it quite a bit faster than we're using it, actually. I thought uh, with such a big reactor, we are going to need a lot more. <laughs> but it's actually lasting pretty good. So that's neat. And what else? Oh, yeah. So 
We got some quests done here. We actually did these before, but there was a glitch with the the pack, if you remember, but we just did them again here. Uh, this one we need 64 of the plutonium, which we have gotten by now. That one's good. And now that we've done this, we can start producing ludicrites. There's two recipes for it, one of them with nether stars, emeralds, and ender pearls, and this one uses enderium and blaze rods, and I think this might be cheaper for us, actually. Oh yeah, so if we want to, if we want those enderium blocks or the emerald blocks, we have to run them through the smeltery, which is another reason why we want to automate that. So we're, we're going to do that next. That'll, that'll be our next little project here. Let's check out our bags, garbage, and... Ooh! Now, chemical coins. We'll need those soon, I think. Put them into storage for now. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think there's any reason for these that we'll, we'll need them. Okay, so let's go downstairs. We'll start working on our, our smeltery step. I got the tinker things in the chest here already. So two controllers. We're going to we're gonna make two smelteries, I figure, is the easiest way because we want to make blocks and we want to make these plates, right? The other option is we make one smeltery that can somehow switch between them, but I think that is more likely to have problems and, and be way tougher to set up. So we're just going to make two. Two smelteries always set to either output blocks or the plates. And where do we place it? That's there. I want a one block gap between the two. I guess they don't need to be three by three, right? I'm just so used to making three by threes. <laughs> Maybe we'll make them too wide. How does that look? We got one block on that side. There might be a wall here eventually to cover up the cables. I think that's about as centered as we're going to get. Okay, still trying to figure it out here, but I think this will work. Looks a little bit funny, but we're just going to make them two by three in size, I think. We have our controllers here. We might just put interfaces like this and then put our recipes in there for making the blocks and the, and the plates of what we need. And then we have our fluid tanks next to each other as well. The plan is to use gasoline for the fuel, not not lava, because we saw gasoline's a lot faster. So hopefully, if we could get like a fluid uh, export bus or something, we can pump oil into here maybe, and then put that into the tanks here. Whoa, that would be ideal if that works. And then. One of these, again, is going to be for making blocks, other one for plates, and we'll just have to pump out of here from both of these, extract and extract, and send those to an interface, maybe down here. Hmm, is that stupid? <laughs> I'm not sure. And then put a cable between. Yeah, and then if we get the fluid export bus for the oil, put it into here, hopefully. That's about as compact as I can make it, I think. Oh yeah, and uh, this will need constant power for these faucets, right? So you can just make levers for that, I think. Cool. Uh, I guess let's fill this up and hook it up and we'll try it out. Okay, I think it's uh, mostly set up here. We're gonna run a test to try it out. So we'll, we'll turn this to processing pattern. We wanna tell it's nine ingots makes one block, right? So it's nine to one. All right, so we take our pattern and we're gonna put that next to the smeltery. Let's go back downstairs. Took the long way. <laughs> All right, so here's our smeltery. It kind of looks a little bit better now that I hook them together with the top here, I think. Still not the best though, um, but this is not a building series. Put the levers at the bottom, right? So that'll keep these powered, I hope. I don't know, actually, do you power the drain or do you power mm. the faucet? I think the faucet, maybe this won't work. We'll see. And then I connected a cable in the middle here. It goes up and to there. And a power cable to our refinery here. So hopefully this will start uh, making gasoline. No oil. I don't think we put it there. If I can figure out how to do it, that is. <laughs> uh... Okay, might need to insert it a different way. Well, just to try it, 
we'll probably use the export bus later. The fluid export bus, once we set that up, that's a little bit complicated, though. It'll take some time. Okay, we can do it with buckets. There we go. So hit refine. That'll just give us a little bit to try this out with. And I don't know if it's going to export out of there. I hope it does. It doesn't look like it, though. Yeah, the fuel's stuck in the fuel tank here, even though I set up a cable to pull it out. Maybe I got the direction wrong. There's a black side and there's a yellow side. Maybe they... Oh, yeah, yellow side. Okay, there we go. Cool. All right, so those are filling up. And now for our block recipe, I guess, is this one. So we'll put that in here. And now... <laughs> and now, if this was set up, I could do it down here, but gotta go upstairs. Getting a lot of lag. I think uh, I think the redstone furnace and pulverizer there is causing the trouble. I might need to change those out with some other machine. But let's try this out. Enderium blocks. We'll try craft five of them. Okay, let's go downstairs, see if that works. Looks like, yeah, it made the fluid. It did not extract with the faucet, though. Okay, so I kind of messed this up, actually. We got to use redstone clocks, not levers at all. Because levers, they'll run once per pulse, and then uh, they stop while this, like, runs all the time. So we'll put one above each of the faucets. And the problem about using the clocks is it kind of starts and stops constantly, so it's not as quick. But it should be fine. I think. All right, cool. So I think this is all good to go. And then same same deal for the plates, just different amounts of material. Yeah, let's start the next one. Good. So I'm happy with that. And now we can start mass producing ludicrite and other stuff too. But uh, anyways, guys, I think we're going to have to wrap up the episode here for today. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching as always. And I'll see you again in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.